Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me to such a, um, such a meeting and to uh, giving me the opportunity to address such a distinguished audience in this wonderful auditorium. First of all, one uh, information. I am not a, an anthropologist. This is important. I am a paleontologist. In the, that's a very different thing. Well, uh, so the, my, um, my talk, my lecture today is, could, could have been entitled differently um, because the issue is, is a question. Uh, the question is, um, is climate or environment in general a driving force in human evolution or to what extent uh, changes in the environment have driven human evolution up? It's an old question, it's an important question, but the, th this first picture illustrates what I will call a climatic clash between humans and the uh, environment. A Neanderthal with a woolly a rhinoceros. That's the story. Mm -hmm. I am not particularly skillful with these things, but I would. Any help? I, which one of these two or three? Uh -huh. It was me. All right. So, in Europe, the, the issue is, is too big and the problem too large and too much time has to be approached in 30 minutes. So I will concentrate, I will focus on human evolution in Europe and the glaciations. Uh, to um, what extent glaciations have driven human evolution in our continent. Because glaciations, there have been a lot, as I will, as you all know, and I will point out. But of course, it has been posed several times that climate has been the driving force for the origin of, uh, for instance, genus Homo or genus Paranthropus. So there is climate, there is the, the onset of the Pleistocene and the uh, glaciations was the, um, the driving force for the emergence of the genus Homo. So this is different discussion, but is the well is is the evidence is the most compelling evidence for the um, to to support this um, angle of the environment environmental um, driving of the human and other group uh, biological groups evolution. But, but of course, in Europe, what we have is glaciation, and glaciation have had a tremendous impact in the ecology, not only the climate, and the evolution or could have had a tremendous impact. Because winter is coming is exactly what has been happening many times in the last million years in Europe, we have a fossil record for hominids, for hominids in the last million years, a little more, in Europe, and the, most of the time that there have um, been glaciations. Or the other way around would be more would be more exact. That what was sometimes coming is summer, no winter. Winter was the rule; summer the exception. Um, although they are depicted in the portraits, the, uh, homin the fossil hominids in Europe, um, nude, they had to be most of the time um, suffering very harsh conditions. 
of temperature and climate. Because if you look at the, as you all know, but it must be realized for human evolution that most of the time, 99% of the time in the last million years, uh, average temperatures were much below. It is not, it is not a question of the um, changes between warm and cold periods all the time, but it is, it is not an alternation of summer and winter. It is mostly, it is 99% um, cold for human, for homing standards, I mean. It is, this is a relative term, but it's, it's called for, for a homing and for a primate most of the time, and very occasionally there has been um, more temperate temperatures, more compatible with a uh, primate species as uh, we are in the end. So most it is because for, for anthropologists and archaeologists, they, in their minds, uh, the, the history of the climate in Europe is a interchange between, is, a, is all the time uh, switching between hot and cold, hot and cold, and th this is wrong. It is almost 90% of the time cold for hominin standards. As you can see, it is all underneath the present day baseline. And most of the time it has been much under the present, present day baseline. So for hominins, Present-day ecosystems and temperature are the exception, and cold ecosystems ha have been the rule. This is a different perspective. And this is very important for the tale I am going to, I'm going to talk, that for most of the last million year, almost perhaps 50% of the land available for hominins was the Iberian Peninsula because the rest of the uh, continent was uh, either an ice crust or a tundra or a steep, uh, what means that human evolution in Europe is for the most part of the time an Iberian history. Everything happened here, almost everything because most than 50% of the landscape was Siberia in perhaps more than 90% of the time. So human evolution in Europe is an Iberian story, like that. So let's go a little bit to the Sierra, to Sierra Taporca in Burgos. I am introducing you, I am introducing you this site because some of you are taking the field trip, I imagine, I'm guessing. There is a field trip, there is no, there is no uh, field trip to Atapuerca. Well, that's better because this way I will be the only one to uh, tell you about the Sierra Atapuerca. Well, this is in the north of Spain, in Burgos anyway. And here we, there are many different sites, dif different ages, all of them, that span more than one million years of human or how many in this, uh, uh, history in Europe, in, in, in those many different sites. But this is the um, earliest, this is the oldest of the sites, and it has provided this, it has yielded this mandible that, that is uh, more than one million years old. And next to this, in another site, in a nearby site, with a different name, this is Grandolina. Um, there is a, a very large accumulation of hominin fossils have been excavated and will be excavated in the in the next few decades. Uh, there are we know for sure it is safe that there will be found in the in the next years a lot of hominin fossils because the, there is a tremendous uh, abundance proliferation of fossils in, in, in one level. 
that is, and this is the important part of the of this story, that is uh, around 800, between 800 and 900,000 years old. This TD6 level where the fossils, where the hominin fossils uh, lie. And the important thing is that at that time, the um, ecosystems in the area, this is north part of Spain, but in, in those times, um, almost one million years ago, the ecosystems were more Mediterranean um, than uh, they are now. Well, this is the reason why uh, there are so many fossils there. There, was, uh, uh, there were cannibals and the corpses were eaten by those cannibals and they were broken and cut bones were left in the site, and this is why uh, the, they accumulated in this layer. And we are very grateful to the cannibals for doing such a job for us. Uh, anyway, at the same time, more or less, uh, 800,000 years ago, there were people living up in England. So in this time period, uh, maybe, maybe, it was thought before that there was only uh, hominin uh, individuals or groups in the Mediterranean part of Europe, but new discoveries have shown that there were also people living at the time in Happysburg that has been called the English Benidorm. There were people living there because the, the ecosystems were pretty, pretty warm. Um, so there were times in the last million years when human population expanded uh, across Europe. But these were the, um, the lesser part of the time. Most, most time they were concentrating in the southern peninsula, mainly in Iberia. And now let's move to another site in Sierra de Tapuerca. This is Cima de los Huesos, where the largest accumulation of hominin fossils have been found ever. Uh, only compare, uh, can only be uh, compared with the new developments and discoveries in South Africa, where another cave, another uh, chamber like this, with also, middle Pleistocene fossils have been recently found. Maybe you, you were here, but uh, two days ago it was in the news, the discovery of more hominin fossils in a South African cave called uh, Rising Star. And this has been a, a big news in the field. But in, in this in Los Huesos, um, at least uh, 28 complete individuals are uh, accumulated in the, in the middle Pleistocene, half a million, near half a million years ago. And this is the largest uh, hominin de fossil deposit in, in the world so far. And well, the, in this case, is, this was not a cannibal job. The accumulation here is interpreted as being made by humans um, as a symbolic behavior or something like that, but they were not eaten. The bones were not broken, they were, the, the, the corpses were not defressed. So they were, they, the bones remain intact and the skeletons are complete without any breakage. So the, there was for sure an accumulation of bodies and this is what we are trying to uh, in, uh, interpret the origin of the accumulation. Uh, together with the fossils, with the hominin fossils, there is also this hand axe that could be also symbolic or not, but this is part of the, um, this is part of the association. Well, the, the, the age of the deposit of the hominin Accumulation is uh, 400, around 400, 430,000 years old. Well, many studies have been uh, published on these fossils, of course. They are very complete. You can see some of them. 
very quick, very fast, that we show you the most um, spectacular of the specimens. So, as you can see, this is um, an unbelievable um, uh, accumulation treasure for a paleoanthropologist, for a paleontologist. This is one of the individuals. And what I'm going to do in the next few minutes is to compare these fossils to other fossils in order to approach the issue of whether climate has been or not a driving force in human evolution in Europe. I, I would say yes, it has been, but in a way that is not the traditional way. The, the, the way people traditionally think climate can influence human or other group evolution. It's a driving force biogeographically. It's not a driving force uh, um, producing adaptations to the climate or temperature. Um, climate can influence the evolution of a species, of a group, by modifying or affecting the biogeography. And this is the, the way I think uh, climatic change the, in the Pleistocene, the, this, this uh, glass, uh, glacial and interglacial periods have um, driven human evolution in our, in our field, in our continent. But the, the point is that when uh, we compare the fossils, these middle Pleistocene fossils, with other middle Pleistocene uh, fossils, as for instance Steinheim, this is a German fossil, or this fossil, Schwanscombe, is the same age. Schwanscombe is the same age, and there were people living, is around 430,000 years uh, ago. Um, is found, the fossil was found in a terrace in the, Thame, in the Thames River. So they were living similar to the Simados Huesos people, living in the, in the north of Europe at, the, at that time. There, were, there have been times where the uh, European population was, um, was living in most of the continent. Uh, I mean, uh, temperate periods. Uh, this is another, this is from Greece. What I'm trying to explain with this slice is that some of the fossils are similar to the Semilos Huesos in different ways. They are not exactly the same, but they belong to the same family. I will use the metaphor of the Game of Thrones, the film, the series, the TV series, because this is the name of we have given to the to our to our hypothesis of human evolution. This is called the uh, Game of Thrones theory. So, uh, using the um, Game of Thrones series uh, jargon, there would be other houses in Europe that were related, were genealogically related. They were related and relatives of the Sima de los Huesos. So there are in other sides of Europe fossils that are reminiscent, that are similar, that show um, a, a phylogenetic relationship to the Sima de los Huesos fossils. But there are others that apparently are the same chronology, contemporary, apparently they are contemporary, of course, the datings of the uh, sites are always, are many times controversial, and they are being revised, and we need um, a higher resolution, a geological frame, of course, this is important, but um, um, so far, some of the fossils of Europe are reminiscent to the Sima de los Huesos and belong to the same house in the, in the Game of Thrones jargon, and others are completely different. So there is a great diversity. For instance, this, the fossil on the right of the slide, comes from the north of the Pyrenees, comes from the French Catalonia, that's, that's Aragó. It's very close to the Pyrenees. And um, still, it is very different from Sima de los Huesos, from the Sima de los Huesos contem contemporary uh, populations. And the same when we compare Sima de los Huesos to Ceprano and Italy, even younger side, 
an Italian younger scientist in different views. I'm not going to bore you with this um, paleontological uh, trace, but in, in, in a few words, when what, what emerges from the uh, European Middle Pleistocene fo uh, fossil record, uh, hominin fossil record, is a tremendous diversity, much more diversity than later on with the Neanderthal. So the main signal of the fossil record is diversity. Lots of different, every site is different. All of them are different. There is no way to establish patterns. There is no way to, to group fossils in very few or in successive uh, different grades. There is no a gradual uh, evolution, it seems. So the pattern is not this pattern. It seems to be more this pattern. It is more cladogenetic. It's more diversity. It's not, it's not one single species pattern. For, according to this, it is called in paleontology and a genetic pattern, linear, it's a linear pattern, you find only one species in the whole continent um, every time. According to this pattern, you can find one, two, three different species at the same time and with different degrees of evolution. For instance, this, is, this would be more evolved than this one, and this would be more archaic. So this pattern predicts diversity and the coexistence of primitive and evolved specimens. So the, the, the fossil record in the European male Pleistocene um, hominins um, fits better, much better in this pattern than in this pattern. So, this is possibly the consequence of this instability in the, in the, in the climate and the ecology of Europe. It, the, the human evolution history in Europe is a history of expansion, short periods of expansion, and very long periods of contraction, mainly in the Iberian Peninsula. And the, consequ the evolutionary consequence of this climatic pattern is diversity, is a strong diversity. And it is not, pre if this is the story, five minutes, if this is the, the story, if the, if the story is continuous disturbances in the climates and instability, you, you wouldn't predict a linear evolution. You would predict a, a much more complex pattern, much more complex geometry for human evolution. So this is why we think that the uh, European hominin record fits very well, fits better with this game of remember the story. Many different house competing, sometimes fusing by marriage, sometimes splitting, sometimes one house occupying the territory of the other house and replacing there are fusions, replacements, splittings, everything. A very exciting story. So, in a few words, there was a second, there was a second half in my talk. So, I, I, cannot, I cannot tell you, I cannot go on uh, in the second half. So, I will finish here because it's my time, but before, but before, let me tell you something. This pattern, the Game of Thrones pattern, we think that is more coincident, reflects better, or fits better with the fossil record. And it is incompatible with the anagenetic linear pattern, geometry. It cannot be. Um, uh, unless uh, all the, that, mm, all the uh, chronologies are wrong, unless they are all wrong, there is no way to fit the evidence into the anagenetic linear pattern. It's impossible. But I will tell you something. The Game of Thrones pattern is, is more complex. Uh, but what is more important is much more interesting because anagenetic, anagenesis is very boring. It's all the time evolving 
slowly, slowly, slowly changing the allele of the gene frequencies throughout time. There is only one species um, uh, every time in the, in the history so that for a paleontologist, and I define myself as a paleontologist, as, as a friend of mine used to say, I am a paleontologist in the worst meaning of the word. Um, for a paleontologist, this cladogenetic, this branching pattern is much more exciting. So thank God he made human evolution in Europe branching and cladogenetic and not anagenetic that would be very a very boring job thank you very much <laughs>